Earth is quite a big planet. We're going to talk about Earth's crust and what we can do with the Earth's crust. Now, here I have a cross section of a very rough sketch of a cross section of this planet. Inside we have the core, which is molten, and the mantle and the crust. As you can see, the crust is a very thin layer. As you can see, the crust is a very thin layer that is right on top of the entire uh, mantle and core. That this whole thing will make up our planet. All right. In the core, you have molten. It's in the core. It's completely molten. And what you have is occasionally um, this core will creep up through the mantle and then through the crust and comes out as lava at the very top in the form of volcanoes or uh, underwater, un under uh, water or in the ocean, the uh, tectonic plates will shift or move or split, this uh, lava will also spew out. Uh, now, um, when lava spews up from uh, the Earth's crust, uh, you will get a type of rock called igneous rocks. All right. These are rocks that make up or come from the inside of the planet. And igneous rocks, when they spew out onto the Earth's surface, uh, what happens to that rock is that after, after it undergoes the process of traveling from the top of the mountains, all the way down into the oceans, it's consistently or constantly being eroded by weather, wind, uh, rain. When it goes into streams and rivers, it will also break up into little pieces of uh, particles and it gets smaller and smaller until it becomes like sand. All right, and when this sand uh, kind of settles, the layer of soil or sand settles one on top of the other, um, and after countless many many years, like millions of years, layers and layers of sand and clay and soil will uh, be on top of one another. Um, the gravitational force and the sheer mass and weight of the top layer will press these, these sedimentary particles together until they form sedimentary rock. And now when this, when the tectonic plates move, tectonic plates are these plates that lie on top of uh, the core and man the mantle. When the tectonic plates move, sometimes sedimentary rock gets re into metamorphic rock because the sedimentary rock goes into or under another plate, a tectonic plate, and the sedimentary rock under sheer volume, uh, sheer pressure and heat will turn into metamorphic rock. Alright? Now, that is well nice and dear. Uh, to know about the rock cycle, but what's more important with for us is to understand that we exploit the Earth's crust through mining. Um, in mining, we extract ores. Ores are simply um, stuff that has a high concentration of the type of mineral or element that we desire. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about one type of ore, which is limestone. Now, limestone is basically a hard substance. All right, it's a rock. All right, it's a type of rock. 
And limestone is mainly made out of carbon, uh, calcium carbonate. Okay, and the formula is CaCO3. Now, calcium carbonate is limestone. That's the ore. And we, when we, we can process the limestone or we can use it directly for various types of uses. But I'm going to start talking about the limestone cycle first. So when you heat up limestone, this symbol here with, with the triangles looking thing is a Greek word called delta, which looks like a triangle. When you heat up limestone, you're going to release carbon dioxide. And what you're going to make is lime or quicklime, whichever you want to call it. And quick and quicklime is simply calcium oxide. It's like calcium carbonate, except you don't you lost the CO2. So that's what it is. And when you add a little water into quicklime, you are going to make slate lime, which is calcium hydroxide. Now, slate lime, the process of making straight lime when you add a little bit of water is extremely exothermic. Exothermic meaning a lot of heat is released. Okay? And with slate lime, it's basically just, just slush, shush, shushy stuff, or not sushi, slurry, like mushy stuff. Okay? And when you add a lot more water into a uh, slate line, you will, and you filter out that um, mixture that you have, or solution that you have, you will get lime water. Now, lime water is simply calcium hydroxide with, in water, okay? Because you have lots of water. So that's what you have. You made a calcium hydroxide solution which is uh, represented by the symbol AQ in parentheses and these words are small in relation to what you have written here okay now with lime water you can introduce carbon dioxide into it and what you get is a precipitation that occurs and that precipitate that solid stuff inside the lime water is limestone okay so you can filter and collect out the solid in lime water after you introduce lots of carbon dioxide into the solution you will get limestone this method of testing of, of, uh, of introducing CO2 into lime water or calcium hydroxide solution is also a, cal a carbon dioxide test. All right, we'll talk more about test a bit later on. Basically, you will understand that you have CO2 in the air or whatever air you're introducing to the lime water because of the precipitation that occurs. Now, what are the uses of limestone? There are lots of uses. We use it to make roads and buildings, right? Uh, we also use limestone to kind of purify, um, purify the I guess you can say the melted ore when we use to make uh, iron or steel uh, when you melt uh, all this ore remember we talked about mining uh, we melt the ore we also can use limestone to kind of remove impurities in this iron ore when we are making steel or pure iron. All right. We can also have limestone, mix it with clay, and heat it up in uh, 
mixer, uh, something that goes round and round, in a mixer, and in the mixer you uh, a mixture of limestone and clay is is made, and after crushing this mixture to find powder, what we get in the end is cement. Now you know what a cement is. Cement is then used to make motor, which is uh, done by the process of adding sand and water. That is the sticky layer that you have in between uh, when you want to build a brick house. Uh, also, when we add gravel, sand and water and mix it up, you, a chemical reaction will occur where you will make concrete, which is again used in making buildings, some roads and stuff like that. All right? We can use limestone to make glassware, right? The glassware that we use in the lab. This is done by mixing sand and sodium carbonate with limestone. We all crush together and heat it up under intense pressure and then glass is made. We also use limestone to treat acidic water, bodies of water such as lake and acidic soil caused by acidic rain that occurs predominantly around industrial areas. All right, the limestone will neutralize the acid and so the soil and the body of water such as lakes is, becomes more habitable to uh, organisms. And we can also use limestone to treat uh, the discharge of sulfur or any acidic particles that comes out from factories, uh, flu. Okay? So that's it. Some uses something about Earth's crust, and we'll talk about fossil fuels and hydrogen uh, as a fuel source next time.